Question from Rick Stoll in Nebraska. He's asking how are field staff being trained or updated with regard to this particular document? Well, Rick, what, what we're hoping to do is, you know, th this is a start for that. Uh, first thing, getting the document out. We, we've sent out a notice, at least for, for NRCS, as to uh, where the document's found, what, what the contents are, utilizing webinars such as this, uh, we do plan on having one with NRCS as well through our webinar series to maybe dig a little deeper to provide some additional guidance, uh, how to utilize uh, the, the document, how to go through some of the examples. And uh, th that's kind of the, the, the main thrust is what we're going to be doing. And then also as people ask questions, we'll, we'll pro be providing that training through one-on-one uh, -on -one contact. It's kind of the, ma the main focus of what we're going to be looking at. But we're more than happy to, to, to work with folks on this. If, if there are you know, some folks that, that would, would like some assistance on this, uh, be more than happy, uh, not only myself, but, but we have a number of our, our environmental engineers that are very familiar with this document. And I know that Dr. John Chastain is available as well to, to help out with, with any assistance that they may have. Okay, so that might open it up in the future for a possible more intensive actually training to the use of the document. Um, okay, another question has come in. Um, just curious why this was or became part of the National Engineering Handbook as opposed to the Animal Waste Field Management Handbook. Uh, one of the reasons we, we put it in there is because it is more of a how-to and the Animal, the Agricultural Waste Management Field Handbook, it, it has some how-tos in it. But this is such a, uh, I guess it, it goes into much more of the theory, goes much more into the, the calculations. It's, it's more of a how-to book. So that's one of the reasons that we made that. Uh, it it kind of goes hand in hand with, with a couple of the others that are listed in there. We, we have constructed wetlands, we have composting. Again, those are how-tos. Uh, this, this document is a how-to as well. Another question from Nebraska. What did you see as some of the more promising separation technologies for use in animal manure? Oh, well, I will say it depends. Uh, it really depends on the, the type of operation that you have. It depends on, on what the landowner's goals and objectives are. There, there are some, I, I know one that Joe is working on, on struvite uh, extraction, trying to reduce that phosphorus. If, if you're in those watershed areas that have uh, you know, high phosphorus soils, uh, you're probably going to be looking at those technologies that, that can help to reduce uh, phosphorus. Um, you know, we, we, we look at, uh, like the Chesapeake Bay, they, they have that, that very issue. Um, if, if that is the major issue and you've got to reduce your phosphorus, I think some of your, your chemical enhancement technologies are, are some things to think about uh, using, using those polymers. Uh, but, but by doing that, you're adding expense to the system. So uh, I, I think that there, there, there are a number of technologies out there. The, the sand separation, I think, is, is, a, uh, is a good technology. There are the mechanical ones. That, that's good for your dairies. Uh, there's the, the, the gravity type of the sand settling lanes that, we, we, that I outlined here. Uh, there are so many technologies out there, and, it, and it's constantly evolving. Um, I know there's another project out in, in the, the state of Washington, also in Vermont, that they're using dissolved air flotation. Again, trying to reduce that, that phosphorus, those solid loadings. And, and so, again, it depends on the extent of the separation that you want, and it depends on what you're trying to get separated out. If it's just solids versus you need to get nutrient reduction, so the, or, or nutrient partitioning. It, it, it's really going to depend, and, and hopefully this, this document will help uh, with with making some of those decisions. So the last question I think that we'll end up taking for today, um, Jeff, is uh, how might this document be related to, uh, I, I believe the question is regenerative agriculture or sustainable agriculture. Um, how do you see it uh, tied in with that, and I, I guess in terms of a recycling standpoint? Well, I guess there's a couple things. Uh, Going back to like like the dairy operation, if if they uh, decided they wanted to use uh, recycled solids, manure solids, 
they they uh, would not have to bring in uh, you know the sand. They would not ha would not have to continue bringing in sand because they would have almost an unlimited source of of solids that they could utilize that. Uh, also, if we're if you're able to do a better job of, of partitioning your nutrients, you can actually put your your nutrients on the fields that need them, and and you're not going to be putting excess nutrients. So you're going to get a better utilization of the nutrients to better recycle those nutrients, uh, and, and, and then I guess also by if you could do a good separation, uh, you can put the solids. Maybe you can transport those a longer distance. Uh, the liquids maybe do some more in injecting, so you're you're not volatilizing, or you're, you're potentially not losing as much of your nutrients uh, to some of those those uh, uh, atmospheric types of things, such as volatilization or even runoff. 